Hey y'all, Patrick here. Today we're gonna check this out, the Squire 40th Anniversary Precision Bass. We're also going to check this out, the Squire 40th Anniversary Jazz Bass. So when Squire first announced these Gold Edition 40th Anniversary Basses, people were really excited about them. But then they showed the price tag, a whopping $600 brand new for a Squire. $600 brand new for a Squire. Is this where we're at now? Um, but I will say with the quality, the feel, playability, and sound out of these two basses, I do genuinely think they are worth $600. <laughs> So what exactly is it about these 40th anniversary bases that makes them have a price tag of $600 brand new? I don't know, but let's go ahead and jump right into it. But before we dive in, and for the sake of transparency, this video is sponsored by Sweetwater. These are our great friends, a fantastic company with so much care and quality too. With features like their guitar gallery where you get to choose the exact bass that you want, which is just such a cool idea. Guess this one. I want this one because of this weight and because of this particular color too. Bam, that's the one you're gonna get. Then going to their 55 point inspection that every instrument receives. Undoubtedly the best part is the candy that comes in with every package. Mm. We gotta love the people over at Sweetwater. I truly do appreciate this company. And even though this is a video sponsored by Sweetwater that has no control over what I say, how I feel, and what sounds come out of this video about these bases. So yeah, let's just jump right in. So I'm just gonna flat out say it. These are great feeling bases. They do feel fantastic, absolutely solid, and the quality feels so superb across the board in general. That was really one of the first things I noticed when I opened the box was just the quality of how it felt in my hands did not feel like a normal Squire. It felt like a low-end Fender, which is, I think, kind of what Squire's going for now. I think they're, instead of trying to be Squire Fender, they're trying to kind of do the Gibson thing of where it's just, Gibson and Epiphone, where Epiphone is right under Gibson and in some points higher than Gibson in terms of quality. And really, I think that's what Squire's trying to do with this line. They're trying to see, hey, maybe we can make our own Epiphone versions where we kind of make them just like the Fenders, but in some instances, make them better than some of the standard Fenders that are out there. At least that's just what I'm assuming. Epiphone's done a fantastic job, especially over the past two decades, really bringing up their quality all around and really challenging Gibson in a lot of ways. But I think Squire's kind of taken notes and said, hey, we wanna start doing that too. But there's no telling if that is true or not. I think I might just be speculating, but uh, let me know what y'all think about it.
starting with the body of both of these basses, you have, of course, the classic Fender Jazz Bass and Fender Precision Bass stylings that are just what other way can you say it besides just classic, essential? Now they're made of NATO, which I had never really heard of before this, I don't think, but it seems sort of like an alternative, sort of like Poplar is, where it's just a hardwood that's not really used that often, but I think more so it's being used more now, I'm guessing, but the body itself is nice and lightweight, but still solid feeling. This precision bass comes in a late placid blue finish, which has just a very nice shine to it. And the jazz bass is in this super slick Olympic white that looks fantastic with the gold hardware too. And speaking of gold hardware, both bases feature gold hardware throughout both of them. I just really like how for the 40th anniversary, they made these gold editions that just look super slick and very elegant in my opinion. And to throw even more gold into the fold, both bases have anodized gold pit guards too that just look beautiful. For the electronics, both of these don't really have anything new to them. For the P base, you have a very traditional setup of your volume and tone knob. Then of course, the one split P pickup that sounds very bold in your face and of course, just very full too. It's a very good sounding pickup, nothing really against it at all. It's just a Fender design P pickup that sounds like a P bass. And also for the jazz bass, there's nothing really new here. You have two volume controls, a tone control, as well as your two single coil pickups. That sounds like a good jazz bass in my opinion. Again, both of the sounds of these basses are just really good and what you would expect from a good Squire or again, a regular low end Fender too. Then moving up on both bases, you have bolt-on 20 fret maple necks that have Indian laurel fretboards, white perloid block inlays, and white binding too. I love these necks and how they feel. There is one thing though, and that's that they both have clear coats on the back, which is not my personal preference, but it's nothing that I really notice any drag or anything when going up and down the fretboard either. Of course, the P-Base feels a little chunkier overall, and I absolutely love the P-Base neck, but the Jazz Bass neck is super slim and quick too. And then both bases feature a bone nut as well as classic style tuners that do a pretty good job of staying in tune. They're not perfect by any means, but they still do a damn good job at keeping your bass in tune. Now, while I'm no expert on the jazz bass or the P bass, um, I'm a huge jazz bass fan, as you can see right here. Now, I will say with both of these Squires stacked up against these old made in Mexico fenders, and these are all from the, I think, mid to early 2000s, so it's not the new player series, but they stack up pretty directly with them, in my opinion, in terms of play and sound too. It's really quite shocking and really awesome. Considering the player series now is around eight, $900 brand new, it makes it something where if you don't wanna spend that extra coin, going ahead and spending $600 on one of these beautiful Squires is a really good step in my opinion. But just from my experience with Fenders in general, these are top notch quality Squires that feel, play, and sound fantastic. But of course, let me know what you guys think about these Squire bases in general. Is $600 too much for a Squire? Or do you kind of agree with me where you're sort of thinking, I think they're kind of trying to go the Epiphone route and let's see what happens. I wanna see what new models Squire comes out with that are really just insane and just 
kind of maybe put Fender down a little bit where they're like, hey, look what we can do. I would love to see that and love to see Squire try all these new things. But of course, let me know what y'all think about these 40th edition bases and what you think Squire is going to end up doing in the future. Thank y'all so much for watching. Of course, as always, for watching, liking, subscribing, sharing my videos, follow me on social media, all that crazy stuff. I truly do appreciate it, y'all. And of course, a humongous thank you to my Patreon supporters over here. Mm. If you want to be like one of these gorgeous people right here and help support the channel every single month, be including things like early access to videos, giveaways, and more, then go ahead and head on over to my Patreon page. But one last time again, thank y'all so much for watching as always. And of course, no matter where in the world you are, stay safe, practice that bass, and I'll see y'all next time.